ready for another lesson. Welcome to KYOT, <laughs> your place for all of that smooth jazz. Smooth jazz. Smooth jazz. What's up, everybody, and welcome back to Back Row Banter, your favorite casual movie talk podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Adam Schwartz, and we're back. Uh, yeah, that was our filler episodes where we were gone, was the uh, KYOT smooth jazz hour. That's just what I've been playing on loop on the... Uh, right. On the recording, <laughs> so on the, yeah, yeah, on the broadcast. Yeah, if you were streaming back row um, headquarters, that's what you would have been hearing while we were right, going. right. It's kind of just it's it's like it's that the whole music. It's of like back that row thing <laughs> <laughs> is, is KYOT. Yeah, it just redirects you to KYOT, yeah, exactly. the actual web page of the actual music station. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, hello everyone. It's good to see you guys. Uh, this time we actually are welcoming each other back yes we are actually back uh it's been three weeks we yeah, had a first time in a minute yeah first time we we skipped a week and let alone i don't think we have we ever skipped back to back weeks there might have been one other time yeah if anything it would have been black friday it was like, like a black christmas. friday holidays yeah. thing maybe um christmas new year's something right like right and i i think we one time skipped like two in like the span of like four episodes or something like that yeah. i don't know but Hey, everyone needs a break every once in a while. We, I know I certainly had quite a lot going on in my life, and uh, I think Tyler did too. So um, he, he did a few yeah, things going on. Yeah, some things going on. There's a few things going on. Um, so yeah, we're but we're back. Uh, we apologize for the delay. Uh, if you're like, hey, what the hell happened to that um, uh, Talk To Me review, Don't don't ask. I don't know what happened to it. Talk to us later. Talk to us later. Exactly. Great uh, movie, though. If <laughs> if you haven't seen it, please. Yeah, go hopefully, check it out. hopefully we get some time for what we're watching. And I think did both of you, Nathaniel and Blake, you guys both saw. I've not seen it. Oh, yet. Nathaniel didn't get there. Okay, so Blake, maybe you can touch on that a little bit. Uh, and and yeah, be- for sure. because we didn't get to talk to me, of course, you might be confused as to why we're watching Nightcrawler. It was just it was just on the short list, and it was streaming on Max and. We wanted to watch it. Um, I did forget to put out. And we t- wanted to get back to you guys. And we wanted to get back to it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and I, I, I did forget to put out a tweet saying, hey, we're going to watch Nightcrawl this week. So that is my fault. But it's a good movie that I'm sure a lot of people have seen already. It's streaming on Max if you've not seen it. So you can go watch that right now. Uh, and then come back for the review. Um, yeah, we'll be, we'll be watching We'll be watching Nightcrawler or reviewing Nightcrawler. But before we get to any of that, I'm joined today, of course, by Nightcrawler Nathaniel. Nathaniel Gingrich. What up, folks? I'm Nightcrawler Nathaniel. Na- Nathaniel, it's like 9:30, isn't your or 8:30, isn't your shift starting soon? Yeah, this the, after here, I'm gonna go out. And I'm gonna crawl some of the nights, crawl them away. Like Batman. No, no, no. The Batman. That's my other character. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Wait, what was the one? Like a worm. What was the what was the character? What episode was it where I gave you a superhero name? It was the Batman. Was it the Batman? I'm pretty sure it was Batman, yeah. I forgot. Could have been. Was. Who knows? Or uh, some other time. Go through and tell us, folks. We've got enough no, it was nicknames like, it on was like, at this point. Maybe it was like the Bat or something like that. Yeah. I don't know. forgot what it was. Yeah, we've, we've had a lot of names at this point. Maybe it was Power. It, I, that's what I was thinking, too. It might have been Project Power, but it was Could've way been. more recent than that. Could have been. I don't remember. But it doesn't matter because this week I'm Nightcrawler. Nightcrawler. Nightcrawler Nathaniel. Which is also a superhero. True. Um, sure. He's got one of my favorite superhero powers, which is the teleportation. Teleportation, right. Yeah. Poof. Yeah. Bamf. Right. Uh, he's uh, he's also got one of the better superhero scenes. I want to say that's the opening say. scene. Uh, was that X2? It is. Yeah, that is one of the better yeah. ones, I think, out the there. White House? Yep. Killer scene. Yeah, so... If you haven't seen X2, at least the uh, opening scene of that, I'd say, is probably within top five opening um, of superhero scenes, for sure. That's pretty dope. Who else we got this week? Also joining us today is Married Man Ty. Ooh. Hey, round hey. of applause. Yeah, get that get that applause button going there, Nathaniel. Oh. Whoops. Yeah. You, Crickets, man. you son of a bitch. <laughs> yeah. It's underneath the applause button. <laughs> 
Uh, Tyler, you're a different man than when we last heard from you. Yeah, new man. I am. Yeah. How's the? Uh, yeah, it's a. Uh, it's been a. It's been a busy couple of weeks for me. Yeah. So we haven't really talked. Any of us haven't talked too much since your wedding. Uh, how did how did everything go from your your perspective? We obviously talked briefly at the wedding, which was amazing from my point of view. Of course, as a attendee, had a great time. Absolutely, everything I saw Absolutely. went went well on my end. So if I don't know if there's things I didn't see that went wrong, but it looked like it was a everything went pretty smoothly from my point of view. But how did it go for you? Yeah, yeah, you know everything. Uh, everything went off uh, pretty well. Um, Grandma was late right at the beginning, um, which. You know what saved me? Because if if she wasn't like a few minutes late, then I would have been like walking in at the same time as like you or somebody. I don't know. So, we would all which, you, you know it, it yeah. happens, but uh, you know I I looked at Tia, who's our uh, who was our wedding coordinator, mm-hmm. and I was like, listen, if there's like one person we gotta wait for, it's my fucking grandma. Right. So. <laughs> right. No, of course. Um. So yeah, we uh, we waited for her, uh, and it was probably about. Uh, I think it was like eight minutes, eight or nine minutes. Um, but uh, but yeah. Other than that, we had a little bit of a hiccup with our lead photographer. Um, but you know, nothing that we couldn't handle or anything like that. But uh, we had a really good time. Obviously, you know anybody that listens to this, and obviously you three, thank you guys, and you know anybody that came. Uh, appreciate you coming out. We definitely had a good time with it, and uh, yeah, man, it's it's crazy to take 365 days and compile it into like fucking 12 hours is yeah. insane. It's a lot coming <laughs> so, together for what a six hour time span. Yeah, I mean, yeah. eight <laughs> if you count the haircuts. Eight if you count the haircuts. Fair enough. I was gonna say the girls were at the venue at like 8 a.m. So, right. and we were, we didn't get out of there until probably about midnight. So, right, right, right. you know, we'll, we'll call it a few more hours than that, but yeah, it's, uh, it was uh, all in all, we, we had a great time and, um, we're very happy that, uh, everything went the way that it did. And, and then we went to the honeymoon, which was insane. Yeah. How so, was the honeymoon? First time. It was good, man. First time I've been out of the country, like really, really out of the country. I went on a cruise once, but the cruise liner that we were on and I guess like where we were going, they were like, it's cool if you got your birth certificate. So I was like, all right, cool. Well, then I'm not going to get my fucking passport. passport. Right. Right. Um. So, yeah, I, I had to get my passport for this one. Obviously, we went to Antigua. And uh, and yeah, it was it was like out of a like out of a movie um water like you wouldn't believe and it was like an all-inclusive resort so you have like three meals a day and right like all your stuff's like already paid for so all your drinks are just like open bar and but it was it was cool it was very uh very impressive had a ton of fun obviously relaxed a lot but yeah it was it was good and uh we're very happy and how many days were you guys out there again was it a full week uh, it was it was five days. Five days. Five days. Yeah. yeah. Not bad. Uh, sorry, I couldn't really hear some of that. I was having some audio troubles. But uh, while you mentioned there, obviously all inclusive, all you can drink and whatnot. Did you all have a drink of choice while there? Mm. Um, she we so when we got there, we tried out like a couple different ones just to see like what we would vibe with for like the first like for the next like five days. Mm-hmm. And um, some of them you could tell they poured like really strong, and obviously there's different bartenders, and so. There was like the resort actually has like two separate sides to it. So there's like a, a sunrise side and a sunset side. <coughs> Excuse me. And we were on the sunrise side. So okay. there was like one main beach that we really went to. And then sometimes in the afternoon, we would go to the other side to the other beach because like there was a grill over there that you could eat at, at pretty much any time of the day. So like if we wanted like a snack, you could go over there. So that sure. way you didn't have to do like just the three meals that they have for you a day. But um but yeah so she ended up landing on uh they called it a coconut bay breeze Ooh. um and then i ended up doing uh just like it it was called a lemon drop it didn't taste like the shot like a lemon drop okay. but it literally just tasted kind of like 
boozed up lemonade. So I was like, I'm cool with that. Like I'll sip on that all day. For sure. <laughs> so, for sure. Yeah. so that ended up being more like my go-to. Yeah, not bad. Not bad. Yeah, yeah. All the food was good. It was like very um it's a smaller it's not like a smaller island, but like it's smaller in comparison, to like obviously what we're used to. So there's like mm-hmm. No fast food, and you can tell like all their food like doesn't have like all the preservatives in it and stuff like that. So everything was like very fresh, and um, so yeah, but it was cool. They they did a really good job. I would recommend that place to anybody. Cool man, I'll I'll have to add it to the list. Yep. Well, glad you had a good time. Glad uh, wedding went well for you. And uh, yeah, yeah. Shout out the newlyweds, man. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and we went venue too. Ooh, venue. how was that? Snorkeling was fun. Um, also, Blake, yeah, the venue was like, I, it was just something we found like at the beginning of COVID, and uh, it's a, it's a fucking gem. So yeah, it's cool because we'll. That's like one of the benefits about having a winery is your your venue. We can literally go there, like forever, till that place feasibly shuts down at some point, True. which we hope it never does. But you know, you never know. Right um but yeah it was that's a it's a beautiful place so we're very excited that we get to have that um but snorkeling was fun i told leah just because i watch enough documentaries and i love the ocean enough to where i know that coral reefs are dying yeah and um it's sad and it breaks my heart um so we we kind of set ourselves up to not be like wowed and we mm-hmm. weren't it's not like you know anything it was, it was more surreal because it is sad but a lot of the coral was bleached yeah um there was some pops of color but yeah, um the, uh, it was more or less what i expected it to be the reefs are um, not a good spot and there was, yeah they're not at all and uh so yeah there was there was some wildlife there was some fish for sure and um we were hoping to see some turtles, but we didn't see any turtles. But it was cool. You go out in like a catamaran with like twenty other people. Uh, you get to sit like in the front nets, and they take you on like a forty-five minute kind of uh, tour around the island. And then you get to the spot where you're gonna snorkel, and then you snorkel for about another forty-five minutes, and then you take another <clears throat> like forty-five minute ride to another spot, and then they grill out lunch for you, and you can either do like chicken, fish, or lobster. And then you go pull up on a beach for like another hour and then they finally take you back to where you were. Dang. So yeah, it's like it's like a five hour little adventure. So it yep. was cool. It, it ate up like a whole day and you know, sure. we were tired as fuck afterwards. And it was definitely worth it, just you know, be on the boat and the experience of snorkeling and everything like that. But yeah, it's obviously, you know, surreal and sad to kind of see the core reefs in that condition. Yeah, I hear you, man. I think we're all pretty big nature guys here yeah. so yeah that, that stuff is yeah. uh, but nonetheless though that's still awesome that you're able to get out and kind of see some of that stuff um and that that's part of like traveling right once you get there that far you're like hey fuck it we might as well try to snorkel we might as well try to just do different excursions right and kind yeah of, i'm glad we did it for sure yeah, broadening your horizons yeah the uh the coral reefs kill me man because they're such a great ecosystem And when you look at just all the biodiversity within it and uh, all the cool animals that live within the coral reefs that just have no place to go now. So really sad, really, really sad. Because, I mean, the the, uh, Atlantic reached temperatures of, I think, 90 degrees in some areas over the summer. Um, I don't know if they're they're at right now, but like that just completely destroyed all the reefs in days. Um, yeah, it, it just bleaches it just, everything. Yeah, it, it, which is horrible. Um, so I, yeah, I really don't know. That is one thing. Like, I don't know how you recover in terms of, uh, or like recover the reefs in terms of like the, cl- the climate change effects of all that. Yeah, it's just the temperature of the water's got to go down, and then it's yeah. got to basically uh, yeah. regrow itself. But yeah, it's, um, there's a lot that needs to happen for that to happen. Exactly. Yeah. So. And it's like it's crazy because it's only like a couple of degrees in like the maximum water temperature that it can reach that it could like just shut it down. Exactly. Yeah. Also joining us today <laughs> is big breaking news, Blake, Blake Holder. Hey, what up? What up? You got any breaking news for us, Blake? Um, no, no, 
Any exciting it. news from the, your last three weeks? Anything you need to update us on? Uh, I'm sorry, what was that? Uh, Broke up a little are bit. Are you good? Any any big news from the past three weeks you need to up, up, uh, update us on? Maybe it's not Ooh. breaking news, but do you have any news that you'd like um, to share? Any movies you've seen? No, anything nothing like big. That? Uh, Saturday, I went to the Purdue game. So I went to oh, that's right. Dad that's right. My friends. They ended up yeah, winning so that went game? To Purdue. Uh, they lost. So they lost to Fresno State, which I didn't go there as a Purdue fan. My dad didn't go to Purdue. Neither of my buddies did. Right. Um, I haven't been to Purdue since we've played them uh, my freshman year at NIU. We played Purdue. That was the last time I've been there. I've been there as like an athlete. Never been there for a game leisurely. So they played Fresno State. And Fresno State was a pretty good team last year. I want to say they had 10 or 11 wins. Um, so, yeah, they went there and won the game. And they won on the last drive. So that was cool. But um, hot day outside that day. That was this past weekend. It was maybe like upper 80s, just sitting outside, baking in the sun, had some beers. Long day, long day, but that's football for you. It's true. Yes, it is. Well, Toby had a good rest of your three weeks beyond that. Uh, let's get on into the review here, gentlemen. Uh, welcome, listeners, to the main review segment. Nathaniel, if the listener here is new or maybe they've just forgotten, can you give them a rundown of how the review Ooh, segment works? Crack my knuckles, shake yeah, out my right, hands get here. Off the, uh, shake off the rust. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, Sorry, folks, if this is a little bit, yeah, a little rusty, as we sh- would say. Uh, if you're new or maybe you've just forgotten since it's been so long, the way that the review segment works here on back row banter is it is split into two sections. There's the non-spoiler section and then there's the spoiler section. It's pretty self-explanatory in the non-spoiler section. We'll go over the movies, uh, IMDb page, who wrote it, who directed it, who started in it, all that good stuff. Go over the summary, um, go around the squadron, decide if we would recommend this movie or not. It has to be a yes or no, uh, answer. There is no nuance on the internet, which actually came up this week as, uh, did you hear this news? That uh, they found that there's been PR firms cooking the Rotten Tomato scores on movies. Ah, I did see that. I did see that. Uh, You could pay. You can, like, it all depends on who gets access to what reviews, like, first. So if you've got an independent movie and you're starting it out and you've got, like, five dudes on your payroll that or five guys that are part of the PR firm that you know are going to review it favorably... You can make those the first five reviews that are on there, so you come out with a fresh rating automatically, and like that has now started to be nice. seen as like life or death. So truthfully, there's no nuance on the internet, and they are now making boardroom decisions based off that. But anyways, check out that story in Variety, folks. It's uh, I think it's Variety or Vulture, maybe one of the V places. Uh, anyways, I digress. After the non-spoiler section, and we've decided if we would recommend the movie or not, it is going to be the spoiler section. From then on, it'll be full spoilers all the time. Any big plot points or uh, spoilers or twists we'll talk about, we'll dive into the movie a little bit more. But if you don't want to have it spoiled for you, uh, please do come back and uh, listen to the rest of the podcast, which will be marked in our show notes when the spoilers end. And you'll get to hear where we rank it up on our entropy list, which is our big list of everything we've watched on the podcast ranked. With that being said, Adam, tell me about Nightcrawler. I would love to. This is uh, not a new movie. Came out in the year 2014. Good year. I would say. Yeah. What happened in 2014? Name one thing. Well, this movie came out. <laughs> you got me there. Uh, rated R with a runtime of one hour and 57 minutes and an IMDb rating of 7.8 out of 10. Directed by Dan Gilroy, who I'm not t- too familiar with. He also wrote the film. Mm-hmm. Uh, are you familiar with him? I know him as brother of Tony. Tony Gilroy, who made uh, Andor and is a pretty consistent screenwriter. Uh, well, he also has Andor screenwriting credits for that three of the episodes, sense. so that would make sense. Uh, Kong Skull Island screenplay. Th- okay. That was what followed this screenplay. Gotcha. Bo- and The Born Legacy. And Real Steel. Okay, I love this guy. Real Steel. Solid. <laughs> so solid. Yeah, the Gilroys are a good writing team. Yes. Yes, they are. Um they're but writing, yes, written, written and directed by Mr. Dan Gilroy, uh, starring, of course, Jake Gyllenhaal in the lead role and uh, Reen Russo, who I'm Renee, Renee Russo. Where else where might have I seen? You her would in? know her best as Thor's mom. OK, <laughs> there, that makes sense. Uh, she was very big in, I want to say, like late 80s, early 90s, maybe. It took a long time off of acting and then actually came back for. Thor and this, I think, actually. Oh. Uh, yeah, I'm seeing that. She took a six years off from <coughs> 2005 to 2011. Oh, there you go. Yeah. 
Um, okay, but yeah, she's she's been around for a bit. Uh, she's in major league. Ah, she's in major league. She plays Lynn. Yeah, Wells. I believe she's the wife. Is she the yeah. Mm. Uh, that's where I kind of recognize her from too. I think. Uh, who else is it starring here? We got uh Bill Paxton, Riz Ahmed, Riz Ahmed. Which is this like his breakout role? Uh, it was one of yeah. This yeah. is right around the time. It was yeah. this, and then he was in uh the HBO series The Night of, around right around the same okay. time. Got it. Um, but yeah, I recognized him right away, and I was like, wow, he looks so young in this. <laughs> So, so young. Because I think the first role I saw him in was probably Rogue, Rogue One. One. Sure. But I feel like there's he was in something either shortly before or shortly after that. And then I can't remember which one I kind of recognized him in first. But regardless. Was this your first time, Adam? Watching this movie? Yeah. Yes. Yes, it is. Oh, okay. Uh, I was wondering, wow. I was wondering I if that. it was anybody's first time. Yes, it is. It is my first time. Um. I think I'll probably leave it there. Those are like the main yeah. four characters it's not a that huge pop cast. Up. Yeah, not at all. It's it's a lot of Jake Gyllenhaal. He's probably on the screen ninety nine percent of this film, um, as he should be. Uh, the IMDb summary reads as follows: When Lewis Bloom, a con man desperate for work, muscles into the world of L.A. crime journalism, he blurs the line between observer and participant to become the star of his own story. <sighs> Decent IMDb summary. It, it it's got a, it's, it's got its own little flair to it, but I don't know if it, it's too much flair. They he's, they're going all the way around. It's just like ah, yeah, too much too much summary, huh? Nah, just just too much flair to it. You know, he, he's trying to make his own story within the story, and I appreciate that. But also, I feel like it just it's like one comma too long. Okay. Just 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 be a little bit more concise. I don't know, but I do like it. It was a good anyway. Um. Yeah, I got uh, Lewis Bloom, Jake Gyllenhaal. He's um, I don't want to say too much here. This is more of a, this is a crime thriller, ladies and yes. gentlemen. Uh, that is the genre here. If you are not familiar with the movie, um, crime thriller, who potentially Papa very black comedy in certain parts. <laughs> correct, uh, in certain parts, a hundred percent. Papa Schwartz, I asked him to watch it with me. He was he was busy and he could not. But he's like, oh, what's Nightcrawler? Is that is that horror? And I was like, oh, I didn't know. That. I thought you, I assumed you might have seen this or know of it. Mm. Um, but it's now on his watch list. And I, so he'll, I'm assuming he'll watch it pretty soon. And uh, he'll give us his thoughts as well. Um, but yeah, I, don't, I feel like the IMD summary gave you enough. So maybe I didn't give it enough credit. I don't want to say too much more because it's very one of those movies you kind of just want to go in as blind as possible, as I did um, for, for my viewing. But uh, yeah, Jake Gyllenhaal basically. Um, should I explain what night crawling is? Sure. That and that maybe just gives you a yeah. decent idea based between that and the IMDb summary. Night crawling in the context of the film is just people who uh, their job is to get to crime scenes and record film for for uh, television news broadcast. Broadcast. Yep. Yeah. Um. So overnight, any crime that happens, their their job is to get there and film the crime scene so that and then they sell their tape to any news station that's willing to buy it for their for B-roll for their film or for their for their newsreel. Um that is essentially the job of Nightcrawler. Uh and that is what Jake Gyllenhaal's character decides to take up in this film. So it's uh it's that chronicle. Um I don't want to say too much more about anything else in the story because I think having it unpacked for yourself is uh, is is quite the experience. So I don't want to say too much. That being said, it is as I mentioned, my first time watching this. So I had it unpacked for myself, <laughs> and what a ride! What a ride! Indeed. Uh, I'll say it right away. This movie is a recommend one hundred percent. This is so just so well made and so well done, mm. and and and. Something it's one of those movies that just kind of gets you from beginning to end. Is you you just can't kind of take your eyes off the screen. Uh, it does so much really well with with the characters and 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 making you feel so uneasy in uh, what they do. And I want to talk about this more in spoilers because uh, again, I don't want to I don't want to give away too much for any viewers. It's one of those. Uh, but the way, the filmmaking techniques they use to make you feel so uneasy in all these scenes um, that they want you to obviously feel uneasy and and Jake Jonah Hall is a big part of that of course his acting is insane uh, this I don't want to I don't it, it's hard is this his best role is it 
I don't know. It's the one I remember it's up the there. most for it's, now. It's I certainly think. up there. Yeah. But at, at this sure. point, like he's got so many. He's got this. Uh, you, you look at uh, uh, prisoners. It was mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, it was this, or it was prisoners than this in back to back years, which I caught in real time. Is oh, what really kind wow. of put me on to. Hey, this guy's probably my favorite actor. Yeah. Um. So yeah, that's. Long story short, yeah, this he's he's excellent in the in the both of those. Yeah, films. and then Zodiac, he's great in. Like that's another one that's up there for yeah. me. That's some years before though, right? Zodiac's what oh seven, oh seven, yeah, yeah. Like that. He's got yeah. Spider Man: Far From Home. I mean, classic. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I had to. Donnie Darko. Donnie Darko is the other one I was going to mention, but um, yeah. this is yeah. certainly I think I think this goes top two for me. It's uh, it's between this and Prisoners right now, and and this is maybe on more watches uh, could overtake Prisoners. Um, but yeah, he's great in it, and it just all comes together to just grip you. And it's one of those movies you just can't look away from. And uh, yeah, I can't say good, enough good things about it. I think everyone should watch this. I don't think it's too gory or scary or too much tension for anyone to not handle. It's all delivered in a good way. And 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 um, in terms of like how much you're able to stomach. Yeah, it's not a particularly graphic movie. No, or there are like that. some scenes, yes, but it's not nothing too much. Um, as you'd you know. see worse in your normal Law and Order episode, yeah, I'd say, pretty much, or a CSI or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, I absolutely love this movie. Um, I wish I could say more non spoilers, but there's not a ton to spoil. But I just the way I went into it, I wish everyone can go into it. Because I I've heard I've heard things about this movie. I was aware of it, yeah. just never got around so to seeing it. You weren't it. aware of? Did you just know this was Jake Gyllenhaal? Um, yes, and then I do remember hearing it's him with a camera, and I didn't know understand okay, why. I thought he was like more of like an actual <laughs> journalist doing like crime detective right. stuff. I didn't really understand what it was. Um, gotcha. So when I when I realized like oh this is what this is with the camera stuff, I was like oh okay cool. This is going to be interesting. Yeah, so, no, for sure. Uh, yeah, I'm definitely recommend, but uh, I will stop talking. Nathaniel. Uh, yeah, I encountered this movie. I think when it first came out, I remember this being a Netflix movie, and like where most people, I feel like, first came across it. I feel like for it sure. might have had a small, limited release at that time, but then it was like boom, straight on to Netflix, and then I think like it became a pretty big moderate hit for them if i remember correctly yeah i want to say it came on i came on to netflix in maybe like 2016 or so maybe I, maybe even so. earlier than that because i remember it i, think so. I remember okay. seeing it like like you said right around the same time as prisoners so yeah i don't mm-hmm. think it was that late or too crazy with it but um yeah, I mean, it's it's a movie that's i think is really interesting because i always remember it as being more recent than it is and it's also a movie yeah, that I fucking ten years ago. Yeah. And it's also a movie that I think has like already sort of aged into a weird place. Because I don't really think like if you were making this movie today, you wouldn't choose the night crawlers as like the job of the Jalen Hall character. Like he'd be like a weird YouTube grifter or something like that right. instead, you know? <laughs> like <laughs> sure. Well, I, I think like, you we kind of see it in nope. Sure. With like the TMZ kind of stuff. Sure. Like how far can you push it? Like that kind yeah. of thing. Mm, I, I point, think he's uh but like it's a it's a movie that like is focusing on like this part of this industry that really is like not very active anymore because like I don't know anyone that watches the local news anymore. Right. You know? And it's crazy that it was only ten years ago that like right. you would you would have it on in the morning. But I think the 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 ethics and the mindset of the Hall character in this one has become way more like prevalent in our society 100%. now in yeah. the terms of like the build yourself up mindset, grind set, like right. get the bread, like, you know, and then he's just this void of psychopathy and mm-hmm. it's just like an empty husk of a human. Um, yeah. It's more now that I watch it that I feel like I got, creeped out by it more mm-hmm. than i think i did uh, um as a as um, upon initial watching or upon first watch or anything like that um but yeah great movie great sense of space great sense of la uh, in general definitely yeah. like a weird side That's of it funny. you don't normally see and like i don't know if you've you might be younger 
well, you might be too young, you might not have had this experience yet, but like anyone that has ever worked a night shift job knows that like there is this weird like secondary lifestyle that happens at night where you are like a one of three people out on the road or something and like it's just a different feel different vibe different aesthetic to everything uh and mm -hmm. like the people you encounter a stranger like the the things that that pops up the diff the the streets look different it's just a a, a different vibe overall right. Um, and I think this movie captures that pretty well as well, too. So, uh, Tyler, what are your thoughts about it? When did you first come across it? I like this movie. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've seen this a handful of times. I think, uh, I think this was like more of a Netflix movie for me, too. I don't recall seeing this in theaters. I think I would have remembered if I saw it in theaters. Um, but, uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure it was just one of those things where, you just kind of scroll past and even the logo is kind of like red and, and yellow for like the movie poster for it. So when it came yeah. out of Netflix, I was like, what the fuck is this? This looks pretty cool. Jake Gyllenhaal. Like I gotta, I gotta fucking watch this. And so I know that guy. I think, yeah, he's got rep. Yeah. <laughs> he's got street cred. And, um, I was just kind of all in. He it's, there's always something to be said about movies because when you when you get into like a, a movie mind when you're you know when you're in your space when you're in your when you're in the zone um right it's it's always weird to watch a film about something that has to do with film and so when you're filming something that is filming something it's always cool to see those angles and kind of that process and the thought process behind it and the angles that kind of happen. And so it's, it's always cool to, to get in that mindset. And so being in the time frame that they're in, in this movie where this was a new thing, it's, uh, it's very interesting to see those things on live TV um or your broadcast for news and stuff like that so uh jake gyllenhaal plays this character really really well uh as he does with most of his characters if not all uh he just kind of gets into that almost method kind of creepiness and uh i love his character in this i love i love all the characters in this but him especially he just kind of carries it and like adam said he's on screen uh probably 95 percent of the time yeah um but yeah you know the the shot choices in this the dialogue choices in this the stylization of this movie um it's killer and uh i'm a big fan so i'm gonna recommend for sure like yeah uh kind of echoing everything ty and nathaniel um said so far but yeah this is acts i want to say this is only the second time i've seen this movie it, it might be the third time um, and the second time was probably rather quickly after the original. Um, and the first time I saw it, uh, I didn't see it in theaters. It was actually the lone film I had to watch in college. So I took, um, like a mass media news class, mm. um, on politics and our professor, um, she assigned us to watch this film, um, and kind of write some stuff up on it. So, uh, that was my introduction to this film, and I want to say that was my sophomore, my junior year of college, so 2015. Um, so probably probably a year or so after this came out. Um, but yeah, great great film. Um, Jake Gyllenhaal is he's acting his ass off in this movie. Yeah, he and is. I almost forgot how creepy he is till I just watched it again the other day. Um, I always remember the main plot right of him being the night crawler, right? Doing things that are kind of like off the grid, um, not necessarily the best moral compass, things of that nature. Those are things that, that stuck with me, but I just forgot how eerie and creepy he is. Um, and it's almost just like, almost like he's an AI when he's speaking to people. So we'll kind of like jump into that um, when it gets to, to spoilers, but um, yeah, great movie. Um, I was sold in this, like, I want to say like five minutes into when I put it on, I was like, yep, I'm I'm back in the zone. I'm back in the element, and um, Jake Gyllenhaal is just one of those guys. So um, I would certainly recommend. Uh, to Adam's point, 
if you don't know anything about this film, I would probably try to keep it that way and just, just jump in. Um, if you've had some things quote unquote spoiled for you, or if you have an idea of what the plot and kind of the themes and the undertones are, I still think it's worth it because, um, it's got, it, it's got some things for going forward, right? There's some things you may not see going. Um, it also has like stronger stances on, um, like news outlets and media attention and kind of how they can spin things in certain ways too. So, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a good film and still relevant to this day, 10 years later. So, um, I'd certainly recommend. Cool. All right. Well, I think that's a recommend. Um, is that my last? What's up? Was I last or am I passing I believe it to you? so. You are the last one, sir. All right. For sure. All right. Uh, Let's well, do it. I think we'll recommend all around. With that being said, we're going to go ahead and head into spoilers. So if you've not seen uh, Nightcrawler and you do not want it spoiled for you, go ahead, check that episode description where you'll be linked to, or you'll be, you'll find a timestamp to jump to where you'll be taken to our ranking of the movie, have a ponder entropy list. Uh, Nathaniel, spoiler time. The crickets are back. Not the crickets. Spoilers. Shit, Shit. goes down. Shit goes down, bro. Jake Gyllenhaal is so fucking creepy in this. What a I love him in this, dude. He's so good. I, again, I can't emphasize enough. Like, I was just rewatching this yesterday, and I was just like, oh, man, this is really getting to me more than I felt like I remembered it <laughs> in the past. And I think Absolutely, I dude. genuinely think it's because, like, now I've just worked a retail job for five years, and I've just met so many people like him now. For sure. That mm-hmm. you've just run into at certain points where you're just like they're just talking and you know that they're they're just spouting whatever you they just read on the internet and like have no thought going into it, but there's just this consuming like just I don't know, man. You can tell they're not all right there and you're operating on a different level than them. And yeah, they're just freaky as hell, man. Yeah, there's what 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 sold me on this movie and like really the entire movie um, after this point was, uh, and I don't know if this comes down to writing or Jillian Hall's performance or maybe a combination of both, but what certifies this movie as incredible to me is, is he has a line where you can tell Jake Jillian Hall is clearly, obviously he's a psychopath and it's not <laughs> clear yeah. how far that goes mm. and and they open up the movie like telling you oh he's a bad person but then immediately they switch to like oh maybe he's actually kind of just a person who's trying to get by and he's maybe just maybe a little socially awkward like that kind of thing and right, so you're right. kind of you then you just then you just n- are not sure and then what sealed it for me was there's a moment after he gets his first piece of news that he's bringing in and she goes uh Hey, go out talk to Frank in the hall or whatever, and um, you you can just tell he's he's such a psychopath. He doesn't have he has no social cues, and he's kind of just guessing. It feels like at what his responses and his tone of voice is supposed to be in certain certain situations. Mm-hmm. And Jake Gyllenhaal, his character, like he gets his in, intonation wrong. Like he, he he she goes, hey, go out in the hall, and he's like, all right, well, mine's better, <laughs> and like laughs, and mm-hmm. it's like just the delivery <laughs> of the line. And compared to, like, what he's saying, it just doesn't line up at all. And it was so subtle that, like, oh, like, he maybe, like, could have laughed, that kind of thing. But, like, no, it was just completely off, and it's so unsettling. And it, and it, it happens, like, slightly throughout the film. And as, if, as, as I noticed that, I kind of looked for it, and it, like, happens less and less as, like, the character kind of feels more comfortable in his role as and, like, gets more confidence as this Nightcrawler in his position. Uh, it kind of be- diminishes as it goes on. Um, and again, I don't know if that comes down to writing or if that's something Jake Gyllenhaal added in, but it was just genius. And, and, and it goes beyond just like, just the character, but the whole, the the movie was inspirational music and Mm -hmm. like how the cognitive, cognitively dissonant it is to watch Jake Gyllenhaal drag a dead body out of place in a crime scene. And there's inspirational music playing. And it's just so like (laughs) jarring to have you being like so like in in tune to being pumped up and primed for this music but then you're watching such a horrible thing happen on screen but in the character's mind this is the best thing that's happened to him in his career and it's it's pursuing and like it's pushing his career forward and it's just so psychotic to have those two things clash yeah. up against each other there's a really interesting way that i think gilroy builds the film too where like you you do just follow Gyllenhaal, hall lou bloom 
great character name by <laughs> right, the way right. as as he as he like goes through and like you even see it from the beginning where like he brings the the stolen stuff to the the junkyard to the guy and he starts trying to sell himself to him he's like mm. i'm not fucking hiring a thief yeah. and you see jill yeah. and hall kind of process it and like work it out in real time on like why that didn't work and you know the next time he goes to somewhere else like He's gonna have another plan of attack. Right. He's gonna have another yeah. way of yeah. like and, phrasing it and or he something does. like that. Yeah, exactly. When he, he goes to the news station, like he does. And then you see it also on his um in like when he is getting his start too and everything. Yeah. And like the first place he shows up to, he's like, he's got the camera out and he's like, What are you doing? I don't know. I think I can film yeah. here. You know, <laughs> he, and then yeah, right, right, he, right. like a lesser film would have the first thing he comes across be the, the big break, right? But this one takes the time to get the little details right and really chart how he's building everything together. And then, you know, he'll have kind of three quarters of a thought and then the next scene they'll play and like, he'll just be sitting on the beach, but then yep. you see him grab a bike. And then the next scene he's in right. a, he's in a pawn stop and he's, he's, he's yeah. selling the bike. So and like, funny him just pitching as he's like circling the pawn <laughs> shop. I was dying. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But like, and, and that's where, that's where I officially bought back into the movie was that scene right there. Yeah. <laughs> just watching him process of how he was going to sell that bike right, right. for the highest amount of money. Right. Um, he's like, and what, what do like, you yeah, say? Do you say 10,000? Yeah, it was something he said, like that. Absurd, <laughs> something absurd. absurd. Yeah. It was like eight thousand. He's like, I paid over eight thousand dollars for this bike, sir. Yeah, yeah. he's. Like, I won the tour to Mexico on this two, bike. Two thousand dollars, yeah, and I'm giving yeah. it away. Yeah, no bikes got thirty two gears. <laughs> like, right. Yeah, it's it, um, it's a really interesting, and again, like it is just this this that I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna fake it till I do. I'm gonna figure it out. I'm going to like you know lie cheat and steal so i get up there but it's not really doing it because you know i'm just i'm just trying to make it i'm just it's it's got that weird self-serving like you understand where he's coming from and you understand what he's trying to do it but he's a fucking psychopath right and like he's terrifying like you were gonna say yeah, something i'm I, sorry yeah and, and i was gonna say i think as an adult now watching this 10 years later i i see the trajectory of this film right and i see what i can compare it to um, mm. so just looking at Lou Bloom and, and Jake Gyllenhaal's character, I can see this movie turning into like a pop culture icon, the way American Psycho did when you fast forward like 25 oh, years. Oh, sure, sure. This is like the so American think, Psycho. Yes. I think that's what this film is going to be when people are talking about this in 2040. Yeah. Right. It, it's it's going to be this. You're going to see it memed. You're going to see the mannerisms where, um, cause they're basically the same character. It's just that. Lou Bloom's not a rich, ignorant fuck. Right. That's what Patrick yeah. Bateman is, right? But they're just on different scales of really? like the of of wealth and finances, right? Yeah. But still, people well, who are just like Lou's not something wrong. Actively schizophrenic, the way that Patrick yeah. Bateman is. Yeah, he's just um, he's so like he's so thin and gaunt and like hungry looking too, and everything. Like, yeah, it's it's so strange. And and like you mentioned, just kind of his responses to things, you can see him kind of like understand human behavior in real time. It's almost like he's like AI and like, he's not there. Um, right. right. Anytime you're talking to him. Um, it's always like, he's, he's just, he's just saying the right things because that's the right thing to say, but there's like no emotion behind it at all. When right. He says things. He'll, so, um, he'll stay there and he'll keep pressing when all of the normal people would leave. Like that's his big oh, skill sure. is that like, he will just stand there and still be there and still be yeah. present. Um, so yeah i i think um the the scene that really hits home to that or, or where you can see like what type of person he is obviously you see the first few filming sessions right as the night crawler is getting um media footage of like crimes and things of that nature basically all exploitation things but um once he's finally bringing it to the studio i can't think of what studio it is um that he's bringing all his footage to it's like six and, um, or something yeah channel six or something yeah and then I'm sorry if you guys hear that. Uh, oh, it's all good. We're getting a real <laughs> night crawler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, go. Nathaniel's got a. Yeah, you gotta go, right man. Yeah. You gotta go. Um, so yeah, the the scene that kind of hits home to that for the first time that you can really realize just how big of like a scumbag and how off this guy is is when he's sitting down with the lady he's selling the tapes to, um, and he's basically just like in the restaurant. 
Yeah, I mean, he's basically just like, yeah, yeah but if you don't blackmail her, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah. 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 Anymore. Um, and then she's like, well, she's like, are you blackmailing me? Like, are you asking me to have sexual relations with you? Um, so we can kind of keep this business going. And he's basically like, yeah, that's exactly that's exactly yeah, what I'm yeah. Yeah. She's like, friends don't force friends to fuck them or something yeah, like that. Right. And he was like, he's like, well, yeah, they that's do. exactly what I'm doing. Like, yeah, he's like, this it's a transaction. That's exactly what we're doing. <laughs> right. Um, so yeah, that's that scene is awesome. <laughs> but yeah, he's he's so creepy. And like I said, I can fast forward in, in 20 years, man. I think this is gonna be where American Psycho is just like for, for teenagers and whatnot, for sure. Even from the first scene when like the open, when right. he you don't know if he kills that guy. He's not supposed to be. Yeah, and don't. he's like, well, sorry, sir. The gate was open. And, and, the, the, and then he fucking just steals that dude's watch. And the watch, the yeah. rest of the movie, never fits. Yeah. Like, he does, yeah. doesn't understand nope. that he got, he's got to go get some links taken out. No, but he wears it in every scene. Yeah. And it's so good. Yep. And there's, like, a close-up of it towards the end where I, I, I kind of forgot about the watch for the most part. I, on the rewatch, as we have it up on the background, is where I notice, like, it's almost in every scene. It's just, like, upside down half the time. And he's, like, fixing yep. it all the time. Uh, and so like you notice it here and there, but like there's this one shot towards the end where they just go back to it and you're just, you kind of just, it just brings you all the way back to the beginning and how far he's come to. And it's just, ah, uh, it's really good. Yeah. I think too, like, I don't know. Again, the, it's again on the rewatch this time where I'm just like, this movie is such a weird little, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, I'm, I want to say, uh, like, time capsule, but, like, not even. Because I feel like, again, nowadays, all of the shots that Lou is getting and all the stuff, like, even if even if we do see that stuff on news now, it's all cell phone footage. It's all right. people that were, at right. the, at, that were right. there at the time. Like, he, the crux of this film is that he gets there before the police do. Where nowadays, we always see it before the police get there and everything like that, you yeah. know? And I think... That's a really weird kind of transition we've made that I, I didn't even necessarily even think about until you don't, yeah. after like rewatching this movie now and, and like seeing it, seeing it again. And like even if you want to take that further and, and, and extrapolate a little bit more, like I think another thing that we're all kind of reacting to here is like, God, man, a, a miss R rated, like good dramatic crime movies mm -hmm. that you just. You didn't know about or aren't tied to anything like no one knew no one knows this job existed unless you were part of the industry right. like no one sat around and ever thought of like oh i wonder who gets the 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 video of, yeah. the, of the car <laughs> yeah, crash yeah, that fucking camera guys out there at fucking right. two o'clock in the morning yeah, exactly like, no one ever thinks what about a weird that job. <laughs> uh, like and this is a movie that exists because of that it it's not and not to beat a dead horse or sound like fucking film Twitter, but it's not a fucking superhero movie and it's not an IP, you know, built yeah. around trying to gain an audience of 11 to 15 year olds. It's just a good movie about an interesting character who's morally gray and like right. how that affects and, and interacts with our society and how our current system is in some ways built up to reward that. Um, and yeah, it's, it's cool to have that out there. I miss real movies, guys. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we always say on here how we just want, like, original content and original ideas. Um, I think that's what you're hounding on, right? Because that's what they were able to give us in this. Um, where I feel like if this movie's if, if this movie's made today, I would say, one, it's PG-13. Two, it's it straight ends to Netflix. on some sort of cliffhanger where they're going to make a fucking sequel. <laughs> right. And it's just, we don't need that. You know what I mean? I, it, it's concise. It's a one of one. Um, and I think they struck gold, right? So, um, and I don't even know if we really indulged in the rest of the plot, right? In terms of the final case he comes across, right? Where he films people, he goes into a home and you can see him basically like really teetering his moral compass of, I think even at one point. So long story short, there's a crime that happens. He catches these people running out of a, of a affluent home. I want to say it's in like West Hollywood or something of that nature. Yeah, something like that. Um, and there's these people coming out of there. They hear gunshots and they get in a car and drive off. Jake Gyllenhaal's character, who's now the person who goes to these news outlets um, with some of this footage from crime scenes before the police gets there, he goes in the home and starts recording his findings, right, as usual. But there's like five people dead. It, it's it's really crazy. It's been some it's sort a, it's of a like gruesome crime scene. Murder. Yeah. yeah, 
it's honestly it seems like that honestly reminds me of like a clip out of like sinister especially when they go to like the scenes of the actual camera point of view sure looking at it um that's kind of what what it brought me back to um and then at one point one of the people's even alive right. you can hear the person gasping for air and then he yeah. just doesn't even bother walks to help away. him he just like films nope. him and walks away um that shot was yeah that 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 was one it's of the weird things where it's like because you're watching this and you're like is he he's just not he's just not gonna help any of these people cool like he's not gonna try right. to see because if any of these people are alive and then like it gets to the point where like oh this person's objectively alive everybody knows it including lou bloom and he just records and that's yeah. just some psychopath shit man and that's insane. right and i think that's the f- that's probably the final break of the viewer when you see that and you're like, oh yeah, this guy's unhit. Yes, he, he will do anything for the perfect shot. A hundred percent. Because up until then, it's not. Up until then, it's a slow burn. It's a very slow burn. The biggest yeah. thing he did up until then was move the body, which like was still very jarring for me to Crazy, be like, oh sure. whoa, what the fuck, dude. And and so like that's that's all you had up until that point. And then when you see the guy breathe and he just does nothing. And and that's when you're kind of like, all right, we're we're full blown, amped up here, uh, to like, full blown psychopath Patrick Bateman on the loose kind of thing. Um, one of the biggest things is is the slow burn into the reveal that the uh, news reporter is also basically a psychopath. The Rene Russo character. Yes. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. like that's not really something that's understood until very late in the movie that they start to kind of hint at that and then it's really not until how excited she is to like be watching all of this bloody footage from the home invasion and how adamant she is that they that they view it and then the scene that we have on in the background here where she's giving the uh commentary to the anchors to like relay onto the broadcast and She's just so excited for all of this, and it's like that's just so fucked up. And it reminded me a lot of the Succession mm. of, uh, final season, where where they're like, we can't morally declare Wisconsin or the whatever. Voting it was. episode, yeah. yes, exactly. Uh, I think it was America votes uh, or America decides was the name of the episode. Um, but it reminded me a lot of that. Uh, and this is like, this that's the kind of scene that reveals like, oh, she's also messed up in the head. And and then it's never explicitly shown until they kind of tell you that oh, they w- there wasn't just one time that they kind of slept together. It it ended up happening a couple times, and so like and then she and so like they kind of are, have some kind of relationship on the psychopathic level, if you will. Uh, and that was a really cool kind of burn because I didn't really you don't really see that coming. You expect the whole movie mm-hmm. to be about him and to have her have some psychopathic tendencies, and it's all about him not having the social cues and him not fitting in right. But, like, she's blended in perfectly fine. And, and that's kind of the concerning thing, the black comedy thing almost, to your point, Nathaniel, is, like, who's the true psychopath here? Is it the person filming it or is it the person putting it on air? Yeah, and I, th- I think the film does a good job, too, of, like, kind of depicting how you can distribute blame mm-hmm. or, or, like, guilt across right. different people as well, too, where, like, now all of a sudden you still do have this single entity the news quote unquote showing you awful things and commenting on it like it's normal but so many people involved in the process have to kind of be like yeah we'll let it slide or something or like we'll go here for and we'll allow this to happen for it to get to that point and i think the the movie does a good job of kind of showing you all of that as well too right um yeah and then like again like it 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 walks that line between absolutely horrifying and very darkly funny the whole time as well too i think You're right all righty guys ready to rank it up on the entry for list are we good anything else any big points anyone wants to touch on uh anyone want to touch on how he just gets his employee i can't even call him his oh. friend his oh yes yeah. we don't even talk stranger. about rick. we haven't talked about poor rick. rick man <laughs> poor rick yeah <laughs> in the RP in the internship. RP. <laughs> yeah. Who was a good guy, right? He came oh, across dude. and he needed some money. He you was can so... see he was kind of hesitant to oh, take a job. Yeah. Um down on his and, luck. And even Yeah, and, and even going great. back to that scene in the in the diner, which is obviously the, the classic stereotypical movie scene, right? They're sitting at a diner having a meaningful conversation. Um and you can see um that the uh I can't even think of his what what's his name in the film? Um Rick or Lou? Uh, Rick is Rick. Is that his name? Riz Ahmed's character is Rick. Yeah. 
He keeps it's calling Rick, him, right? He okay. keeps calling him Richard, but he's like, no, my name's yeah. Rick. <laughs> yeah, so you can see Rick uh, comes through and he's kind of like pleading like, hey, I need a job, right? I've just, I don't know what it was, something about school or he just moved into town, something of that nature. Um, and you can see Jake Gyllenhaal like not even re- having anything remotely close to an actual business. He's talking to him like he's a wealthy business owner. And he's like, yeah, well, I'm giving you the opportunity to explore other paths and things of that nature. And it's like, it was insane because you, as a viewer, you understand what he's doing. It's like, this guy doesn't have a business at all. Um, and he basically just gets Rick to fucking sign up and he pays him what, like $30 a night after he was going to scam him for nothing tonight. Yeah. 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 (laughs) Um, so he he ends up doing that. And then through the, uh, through the, um, through the events of the movie and all the different crime scenes, they start filming. Um, you can see the Rick character starts to get a little displeased or a little uncomfortable around Lou and Jake Gyllenhaal's character to the point where, they finally, they finally have the conversation that like the viewer's been waiting to have, um, where they're sitting in the car and he's like, "Hey man, you might be kind of off." And he kind of <laughs> explains to him like, "You don't know how to talk yeah. to people. Like you're, you know what I mean? Like you're, you're not personable. Like anything. I don't know if you're telling the truth to me. I feel like you're always lying to me based off your tone and the, in your inflection of words. Um, so you're like, okay, like maybe from here we'll get Jake Gyllenhaal's character to like break down, and then he's just like. No, I completely understand. I've been thinking of trying to get you like uh what is he say? I think I'm trying to get you a promotion and a pay raise. Um and then there's a funny interaction where he's like, Yeah, just call your number and I'll yeah, be able to pay it to you. He's like, uh-huh. and then you can see, yeah, <laughs> hesitation. Then you can see uh go ahead. Where he's like, he just doesn't know what to say. He's like, a hun, uh a hun yeah. uh set, yeah. set. But that's very set. real. Dude, that's right? very real. Like though. what number when somebody do you asks, say? like, oh, fuck it, yeah, just pick your number. Then like you kind of want to like aim for the sky, but you're like, no, I'm gonna be kind of reasonable to the guy, you know. Um, then he ends up lowballing himself, and it was just just really funny. And that's just like a, another lesson of the movie, right? You gotta just shoot for the stars, man, until they say yeah. no. But yeah. So long story short, that happens, and then uh, he gets him fucking killed, and he films it. That's such a brutal shot, and that's oh. yeah. Where Sick, he right? Turned, he walks up to him. He he's just like, oh, turns he's the dead. corner. Come, come get the shot and get a close up. Yeah. Um, he completely gaslights him to like walk around to the front. Yeah, yeah. dude. And yeah. just three that, shots. That was sick. That was sick. Yeah. Also, the uh, the ending too. He he. No justice comes to him. No, no, no. Lou Bloom's still out there. Still he's, videoing. He's still people. got his two trucks. Yeah. He's he's expanded the business. He's got his crew. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, what an interesting choice though to have no resolution for. I think that's like, but that's what happens with any like of those kind of con men. You know, they always just kind of like end up moving on to the next thing, or yeah. like you know, even if you take them down for one thing, they move towns and pop up another again. Like I think there's no, there's no solving that. You know, fair enough. All right. Well, uh, anybody else? Any- I think so big things ty anything you want to touch on no we touched on a lot and uh i've what we didn't explain in the beginning is i've also been a little bit under the weather the past couple of days Uh, so it's a a little hard for me to talk in between coughs and stuff like that but um you know out of everything we've said obviously we can agree that uh the dude's just a psychopath and it's it's pretty crazy to see where he starts and then to see the progression of his character and um, it's crazy that while he's in the home invasion in the end, he's withholding information of the fact that he actually has footage of the people that did it just so he could potentially set something up later for his benefit, Oh yeah, um, which he does. Um, and, you know, that's kind of how that whole ending scene in the diner plays out. And so it's a... Uh, it's pretty crazy to to see, you know, that somebody would go actually that far to accomplish their goals um, and to, to not really give a shit about somebody else um, or, you know, human life in general just to to get where they want to be. But, yeah, it, it just kind of goes back to Nathaniel's point. It's a it's a it's a disease you can't cure they're they're always going to pop up wanting to sell something else or getting on whatever the new bandwagon is and trying to find something else to do and NFTs. just trying to get ahead of the game and so crypto bro it's the head of the hydra 
It's true. Facts. All right. Well, uh, let's head on out of spoilers and into our ranking of the movie Help Upon Our Entropy List. Welcome back, listeners who skipped over the spoilers. We're going to go ahead and throw up Nightcrawler on our entropy list. It's our big list of all the movies we have reviewed all compared to one another. Uh, it's essentially how we rate our movies. If you want to see the list for yourself, it is linked to my letterbox in the episode description. Um, well, I need Waz to, like, he booted me off your Wi-Fi mm. a couple months, like two months ago by accident. And ever since then... When I pull up Letterboxd on my laptop, no movie posters pop up. I don't wow. know why, but it it it, it, it was. This is just the fallout, it, huh? It started that same night, and it has not fixed itself since. So, I I'm gonna need him to fix that because it bothers me. I like looking at the movie posters. I'll get him right on it, please. Uh, with that being said, where where are we put <laughs> where are we put this baby? Bless you. Bless you. Bless thank you. you, thank you. Oh, episode one sixty, by the way, fellas. Nice even Year. round number. Year. Um I mean if we want to reference American Psycho a lot. We reference American Psycho and we reference prisoners. Prisoners currently sitting at a pristine six on the entropy list. American Psycho oh. at a forty eight. American Psycho, wow. Man, that sounds nuts when we say it out loud. Yeah, but there's 160 movies. Yeah, right? that's true. That's true. And they're all bangers except for like the bottom fourth. A lot of good movies. Where, where, where are you thinking, fellas? Who wants to let it rip? Uh, it's a tough placement, though. I'll go. It's just tough. You let it rip. People. Let, let it rip. 51. Oh, my God. So, right. ultimately, that is below American Psycho. And that was making my choice. Yeah, I figured. Um, and then that's Boys in the Hood and Barbie. And then slots in easily above Doctor Strange. I feel like we've used that argument before, but, like, you look around it as well, too. You got your uh, Kill Bill Volume 2s, your Pig, your Top Gun Mavericks, your Terminator. Sorry. God, there's so many good movies. There's a lot of good movies. Power of the Dog, you know, Weathering With You, those are all below them. Uh, right above it, you got Original Kill Bill, Training Day, Nope, Scream. Training Day, I saw it. I was right. like, wow, that movie's so good, too. Yeah. Uh, and I mean, that's again, that's 39. That's not the top 40 movies of all time is not <laughs> is, is nuts, guys, yeah. as well, too. So. And when you think about like where this list is going to go. Yep. Um, so still, uh, yeah, I'm going to put it uh, 51 above Multiverse and Madness, below Marby, uh, two or three below American Psycho, because... Um, in the battle of Christian Bale versus Jake Gyllenhaal, I'm taking Chrissy Bale. Mm. Is that is that in movie form or just as an I think Patrick Batman Dayton versus Mysterio, <laughs> killing Lou, Lou Bloom? In or all in all that forms, I'm taking Christian Bale over Jake Gyllenhaal. In all forms, all three all facets. <laughs> Christian enough. Bale walks it. <laughs> I think I'm going to be at forty nine. 49, so above Boys in the Hood and below American Psycho. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah, I think it's a tight race between the two, and they do have their similarities, but I think they have their differences. But I just thoroughly enjoy American Psycho on a different level than Nightcrawler. Hey, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just seen, um, I follow a film page on Instagram and even just another like pop film culture page i think i've i've sent to, to you all a few times i know i've sent it to adam a few times um but they posted a clip the other day of american psycho it's the one where they're like having the conference and they're mm. looking at the business cards that's bone and it's just his internal monologue <laughs> yeah and i feel like that's the only thing that like this type of film is or that nightcrawler is missing mm, that's a good point to be the direct link to american psycho See, but I don't. Know, I don't like, want internal monologues. I don't want Lou league. Bloom's inner monologue. I love how it is like this. Mm -hmm. It's a well, yeah. Well fair. then, rank it's it fair. higher, bro. Where I, are you putting I, it? I, I am. Uh, I am putting it. Uh oh. Uh oh. Top twenty. What did you say? He said top twenty. Top twenty. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I can't go that high. <laughs> I, I would okay. love to. Are you top twenty? No. God no. Okay. <laughs> um, 
Just wanted to get a little atmosphere. In yeah, well, you, you got my heart racing there. Um, I was like, should I be 20? Is <laughs> what is going on? Uh, I, I pff, nope is the one I'm tripping over above or below nope. I haven't rewatched nope. That's that's why I'm like, I feel like if I rewatch nope, I would probably, I don't know, would I put it above or below? Like, it's make the choice, make the uh, gun of the head, gun of the balls. I'll put it. Uh, above nope, above nope at forty five. There we go. Below wow, Jordan okay. Week. Blake, we got over, this guy. over nope and scream. Um, yeah, I'm kind of in that same range that you guys are looking at, like the about forty, about forty six, forty seven, down to probably Kill Bill Volume Two, which is fifty five. Um, so just kind of thinking aloud of, of where I'm at. I mean, I immediately wanted to place it above Dr. Strange and Shang-Chi um, sure. just cause I'll probably never watch those films again. Um, so like that already cuts that in half. So, right. So then I'm looking at like 50, 51, right where Nathaniel put it. Uh, but then I also do think I like this more than gardens of the galaxy fellows. Okay. Um, and that's kind of the hiccup for me, but that's above American psycho. So it's, it's tough, but ultimately that is behind scream. So I think kind of this the sake of where I'm going to rank it in hopes of just kind of bumping it up um, elsewhere, I think I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put it above American Psycho and I'm going to put it above Guardians of the Galaxy. So I'm going to go 47. 47. That gives us, ladies yeah, and gentlemen. Scream, scream was the hard cap. A nice round 48. <laughs> oh, fair enough. Right in that. between Guardians Three. Look at the mental and look at the mental American math I got. Boom, bam, pop, pow. Anyone know that reference? Nope. Super hot fire. Remember the broke up with my ex girl. He has a number. <laughs> Psych. <laughs> yeah, that's classic. That's the wrong number. <laughs> that that video. Uh, yeah. Classic. That was maybe 2014. Uh, yeah, I don't know if I. Was, uh, <laughs> Crazy <laughs> enough, you're probably you're probably about on par. I, I kind of want to see now, actually. Thir- Thirteen, fourteen, something like that. That feels like a vine. Is that a vine? Uh, kind of. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's in a full I YouTube video a before that though. Uh, 2011, but I think it got popular in 2014. Like, cause it got released, yeah. and I don't think it went viral until like a little bit later. Sure. Yeah. Super hot fire. That's like the OG YouTube days. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Nathaniel and Tyler, they're too much boomers for that. I'm I'm just alive <laughs> to be aware of what that is, Adam. Yeah. That was a big thing my like freshman year of high school. Fair enough. Yeah. Yeah, that's like my freshman year of college. Yeah. Super hot fire. Uh but yeah, so it sounds good, fellas. We're at 48 right next to American Psycho. Um interesting. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Yeah. Uh, what is next week's review? I didn't even look. Yeah, that's what's ex machina. Ex machina. Ex machina. Ha, ha, ha. We're going oh, back, yeah. uh, to oh, yeah, what's that? 15? 2014, I think. Uh, 14. you might 14, be right. 15. Yeah, uh, ex machina. Yeah, it's 2014. All right, 14. That's funny. What a great year. I said it earlier, I'll say it again. One of the last good years. Uh, that one's also on max. Wow, would you look at that? Uh, shorter runtime though. And yeah, that's like a buck thirty. Oscar Isaac, love that man. I'm so I I'm so excited to review that movie, fellas. I haven't I've seen it I think twice, maybe only once. I've only seen the one. It's time. been a little bit, yeah. so uh, but I I do remember loving it, so I am excited to go back. Uh, but yes, join us next week for our review of Ex Machina. It is on uh Max. Max, you said what is uh your literature man. Ex Machina, what is that again? Uh, so an Ex Machina is the uh, is the machine. Well, the machine is the like literature translation or the language. What's the word I'm looking for? Latin mm. translation. But typically you see it as the deus Ex Machina, right. which is uh, the god and the machine, which is basically uh, they are a person or a character that a lot of times is introduced in the... Um, in the 
theatric tradition coming from like Greek uh, plays of the time, talking about like your Iliads, your Odysseys, your um, you know uh, Medeas, that kind of thing. Um, they were oftentimes a character or an entity that would come in the scene and then like kind of either resolve the issue or um, you know provide a big. Uh, moment so it's it's like in the times of the, those times it was always like you had your battle and then the goddess athena showed up and that was the deus ex machina she was there and she would hand you the reason or the the way you should give uh, you the 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 manner of defeating the battle or of winning the battle god. and it became this character that was always there and it was like the hand of god coming down and and providing you what you needed to complete your task i see and over time that kind of became involved in with like the hero's journey right. and like a lot of times you'll see it reflected of like you know the um the hero the protagonist is on their journey and they're uh completing their rising action and they're just before the big battle they go and meet one other character and that character gives them the last piece the last remaining part of it that they need to um you know really complete their quest or become the hero that they need to be so um the like i think the most famous one recently or the one that i think was the big famous one at the time um was the character of dr schultz christoph wolf's christoph waltz's character in django and chain was considered a deus ex machina because he's the one that comes in and drives the action he frees django and then he's the one that like leads him on his journey basically gotcha and then sets up you know the back half of the movie as well too kind of like uh, a sherpa Something yeah in like some ways yeah bit. but they're they're the character that is outside the realm of what the uh, the rest of the characters got it in the, there's in the, the, the got it they have some kind of divinity almost correct yeah i see cool well, thank you for that. There's uh, your literature and thank theory you for lesson. Literature with Nathaniel for the week, folks. Humble brag, master's degree guy himself, Nathaniel Ginger. Uh Cool. Well, we have some time on the podcast. If you guys want to go around do some what we're watching quick? Uh, yeah, I can go real fast. Yeah. Um, uh, it's been three weeks, so I don't know how much you guys have been watching. I've been watching things here and there. I watch. Uh, well, I've been catching up. Uh, I've been caping up with the F1 series uh, since they came caping back. Up. Caping up. Caping up. Um, as well as I watched all three of the equalizers. <laughs> you did tell me this. Oh man. Yeah. I, 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 did, I didn't get to the third one. Um, I've been, I have I, been three equalized. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, it, I got to all three of them uh, over the weekend, including the newest I, one. Uh, yeah, I told you all that the second one's got our got our man in it though. Uh, I can't even think Pedro Pascal. Adam, Had Adam, no idea. Yeah, Adam was chocolate with heavy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I think that's my introduction to him, to be honest with you. Yeah, it was one of those ones where I was that's not like, surprised, or I was surprised. And that was another franchise that I think went back to 2014 as well, too. With the first I one, I want to say out. so. Yeah, I've I've seen both of those with uh, my parents. That's been a full family affair. Even my mom went to see it. And I'm it's sure very it's Denzel. All I could imagine. It's very funny too. Like watching it now, I'm like, man, I feel like if you could put me on the street and like show me like five movies and have me pick out which one's the Antoine Fuqua one now, and like I would be able <laughs> to like tell you, that's my dude at this point. He's got like a kind of unique style overall. Like not someone you would think of as being a particularly noticeable distinct flavor of filmmaking but i really think like he he definitely does as well too but um yeah i mean anytime denzel's on screen in those he's magnetic but i think the 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 tires getting pretty thin on the third one here at this point three equalizer is uh it's a little rough in some spots um yeah i didn't have too high of hopes to be honest yeah i'd heard going into it that it was like they like leaned into it a little bit more and they were like he's almost like a like a michael myers in this one i was like that's interesting to take like your your john wick old man hitman character and like turn him into like almost a unstoppable killing machine that's pretty cool okay so he's, he's damn near supernatural is that what we're saying yeah but like they almost they like they shoot it more like a horror movie in that way of like Okay. And you kind of see this you. across the equalizers. Like a lot of times, you don't necessarily see all of the action on screen in some of those. Sometimes you just see him go and like grab a tool, and then the next scene will him be him wiping off the tool and putting it back somewhere else. And you're just like, oh, something happened. But yeah, anyways. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> and uh, the other thing, the other movie I got to today, in term talking about psychopaths, uh, and another one that. I don't know if anyone on the podcast has gotten to this one, but 
Has anyone seen Killer Joe? Can't say I have. No, I have not. That does sound familiar. So this movie came out in 2011. It's directed by William Friedkin, who the boys and maybe the audience would recognize as someone that just recently passed, but is also the director of The Exorcist. And it stars Matthew McConaughey, Emile Hirsch, and Juno Temple from uh, Ted Lasso. And Matthew McConaughey is a cop that is a that moonlights as a hitman, and he gets hired by Emile Hirsch's character to murder his mother for the life insurance policy and try and split it amongst his sister, his dad, and his stepmother. But it is like the most like just downtown mean south texas like they're all awful people they're all trying to kill each other they're all living like a trailer park as well too and like it's just no one this one was like the one that like started off the reconnaissance like this was where people were like damn matthew mcconaughey can act and this uh, is before or after this is 2011 okay so this is way right. back right. in the day yeah and i feel like people this was like early enough that people don't really talk about it anymore is this before or after true detective season one this is before yeah. Wow. Uh, so, and you'll see some of that in there, but he plays such a good psychopath in it, and it, and it's um it's one of those ones that you feel like you just need to take a shower after watching. Like everyone's mm. just gross, and uh, yeah, it's awesome. So recommend. I feel like I've seen parts of this. Yeah. At least but the trailer yeah, or something. I don't, I don't think. Yeah, something like that yeah. maybe, but I definitely haven't seen the full thing. If you're interested, it's on Tubi. Yeah, it's on Amazon Prime. It's on Tubi, I believe. So check it out, Killer Joe. That's what I've been watching. Adam? I've gotten to a lot in three weeks. Um, I mean, maybe spread out over three weeks. It's not that much, but a decent amount. Um, so I kind of run through these fast. Uh, I saw, uh, watched The Nice Guys for the first time, which is uh, Gosling and uh, I love that movie. Russell Crowe. Yeah, really fun. It's amazing. Yeah, really fun. Um, kind of kind of campy. That's one I'll uh, go to as just like a throw on in the background or like, you guys haven't seen this before, right? And just like go and show that to yeah, folks. Yeah, yeah. Pretty decent. Um, Gosling's funny in it. He is. He is. I, I feel like he's. N- it's. I, I feel like his character was not written for him, where it feels like there are some aspects, especially mm-hmm. with his daughter, where it just doesn't line up with his personality and how he plays it with like how his daughter's treating him. Kind of. It's not too far off. Um, but I don't think he's fully to where I feel like the character was written for. But he's still great in it. He's very funny. Mm. Um, so I, st- I still liked it a lot. And Russell Crowe's really good in it too. Um, and then uh, I watched some, a bunch of documentaries. I watched. Uh, we'll start with the 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 Depp versus Heard documentary on Netflix oh, that man. covered the that covered the Depp versus Heard trials from just last year, which I saw with that there's already a documentary. I'm like, come on, people, give it a give it a at least a year. Like it's I don't even know if it's a year's past, but um, that mo- or that doc was like 50 50, like half of it was like, oh, this is really well put together storytelling for like the trial and everything. But then like th- the biggest thing about the documentary and it's true for the it's true for the trial and the argument that they kind of make is the influence of the social media mm. on the trial, which is undeniable that like it became such a big social trend and a viral moment and a viral trial that like everyone was so heavy towards Johnny Depp and favoring him that it of course influenced the jury, whether they looked at these, you know, they were on TikTok or not. Like it was just such a socially kind of Depp heavy trial uh, in the, in social media and everything and like how much that influenced the trial and the result of it, the verdict. Uh, so the documentary goes into that just way too hard where it's, it's kind of talking ahead where the talking heads elaborate and give context and everything, but it's done through like social media clips and it's done through like fake social media. Or there's one I'm almost positive fake social media influencer that's supposed to be like a talking head, but is like just the narrator. But they make him like a YouTuber. Mm. It's it's actually so jarring because this trial, when you think about it, and they even go into this in the documentary, it is a serious trial when it comes to who's getting believed men or women when it comes to sexual assault cases. Like there is a lot that this trial does influence in that regard. And the fact that it wasn't taken as seriously as it should have, because it's, there are some parts of the documentary where it's like, it just kind of gets silly and kind of memey and gross and they're like not funny at all. And it's just really bizarre to have such like, it's a pretty serious trial and it's two people's lives that that got ruined because of, you know, the, the relationship with each other. And then pub- that relationship was publicized 
uh, so broadly. Like, there, it's a very personal trial, of course, these two people. And on top of that, it's a very big issue. And it just wasn't handled very well. Uh, I don't, at least as well as it should have been, I think. Um, and it was just very kind of bizarre. I, I don't mind. And I think there was some effectiveness to like how strong the inf- social media influence was because pulling all those clips and like showing you what people were saying would show you how hyperbole it became where it was just like everyone was so far this way and like no one was believing Amber Heard. Uh, and so like it's effective in that sense. But there were some things where it was just like, oh, I'm like really into this. It's getting really intense. And then all of a sudden it's like, this guy in a not even kidding like a Deadpool mask with like a hat on it's like really bizarre uh so I loved half of the documentary like it was in more informationally they do go into more detail than I really heard from social media in terms of like what was revealed in the uh in the court case and what was not revealed as well because there was evidence of course you there's evidence that you like can and can't bring up in the courtroom and there's things that were not brought up that probably should have been that probably paint will definitely paint Johnny Depp in a worse light than he was uh, in in the trial itself. So uh, kind of a recommend on that one. The one I would recommend you watch before that one is the Malaysian Airline documentary, and which is also Netflix. Both of these are like three episodes. Uh, the Malaysian Airlines documentary, very good. Very, very good through and through. And it's one of the best documentaries I've seen where the Malaysian Airlines, are, you're kind of going into it like, oh, is this going to be like a conspiracy thing? Is right. this going to be like, oh, here are the actual facts of what we know and what happened? It's both. And it's very good at doing both. Where okay. it's like, oh, okay, like, here's what happened. Here's how the events played out, timeline, everything like that. And then here's the timeline of the response. And then here's when things start getting weird. And, you know, and then it's like, all right, well, then we have these people have these theories. And these people have these theories. And it's like, here are some engineers and pilots that have all gotten together. And they're like, these theories are crazy. And this is, like, really not realistic to think, like, oh, America, Vietnam, Malaysia, and Australia all got together and none of their governments leaked the fact that they shot down the plane or something like that. It's, like, very interesting because they they give these people who have these kind of, like, more wild theories that, like, they have strong evidence, I put in quotes, but, like, the the reasoning is sound as to why they think the things, like, their theories And then you're kind of like, oh, that sounds very plausible. And then they're very, you know, a few minutes later, it's like, well, this, 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 and this is why that might not be plausible. And then it's like, well, this is why this thing happened. And so, I don't know, it was very good. And it very well balanced in all of its viewpoints. And it gives you almost every logical theory out there. And not none of the conspiracy theories that they put out there are, like, crazy. Like, and, And you come away, like... What did really happen? Because now I want to know just as much as everyone in the doc does. Uh, so that one was very good. I liked that a lot. And then I watched the Jake Paul documentary. Why? Because I was curious. Because <laughs> I was that's curious. Great, that's Nathaniel. the question we were all asking. Yeah. I'm sorry. You know what? I think that's the boomer in us, though. You know what? I it, was, it wasn't bad. It was are pretty you, good. Are you a fan of the problem child now? Uh, well, I wouldn't go that far. Uh, I, I certainly empathize with him a little bit more. I, I kind of buy into his whole boxing thing a little bit more. My biggest issue with the documentary, He's which got to fight boxers, man. W- well, yes. Do they, do they touch on that? They do, kind By of. Chance? Yeah, okay. actually, not Fair kind enough. of. They they I address figured. it. They address it. The, the one time he fought a boxer, and he lost. lost. <laughs> yes, they do. They do yeah. put that in I there. I figured they Um, but I was telling Blake about this at the store. I think they make the not so subtle. <laughs> The subtle but not so subtle argument that the greatest boxers of all time go Muhammad Ali, Mike Tyson, Jake Paul. That is <laughs> yeah. dead ass. Yeah, he did. That is dead he ass. Did tell me that. And I was like, we we basically we stop this. It, it, it's like they never explicitly say it, but it's Jake Paul commentary narration about or like people talking about how it, like boxing is finally on a comeback and it's never it's like it, it was going down and down and down and it was, they haven't seen these this viewership in years. And as they're like kind of explaining this stuff, it's like he's he's saying how he's the promoter. He's not the he's not necessarily just the boxer. He's also putting on the show kind of thing. And they like also talk about how Muhammad Ali and Mike Tyson were like the same thing is that their skills Mm. attracted so much viewership. And like even though he doesn't have that same skills because he attracts so much viewership, he's one of the greatest boxers of all time because he brought boxing back. That's essentially the argument they make. And it's bananas that they even think that's an argument you can make that it goes Mike Tyson or uh, Muhammad Ali, Mike Tyson, Jake Paul. It's just bananas to me. And I was kind of laughing to myself watching this because they take themselves so seriously. 
And I was like, that's bizarre. But everything outside of that, they, they kind of like give a background on both the Paul brothers, what it was like growing up with their father, who apparently was very influential on like who they became. Uh, and then like their whole beef back in like whatever that was, 2015, 2016. Um, and then like kind of like how they transitioned from YouTube and then into boxing. And then they do get into it and they even have uh, they have uh, Mike Tyson even talk about like or they have clips of Mike Tyson saying like, of course, I don't like of course, I don't have a problem with Jake Paul boxing. He's he is actually saving boxing. Like when you look at these viewership UFC ever since that's launched, boxing and UFC have just kind of crossed paths and they've their viewership numbers have completely flipped. And year after year, and then Jake Paul and all these YouTubers start boxing, and everyone's watching boxing again. He's like, "Why would I care?" He's he's actually fighting. It's not like he's faking any of this stuff. Like, sure, yeah, is he a real boxer? Yes. He like he's bringing viewership back to boxing. Like, it's great. So it's like I don't know. It gave me a little bit more appreciation for him. They also do make it like all these fighters that he's fighting, and they make him they hype him up so much. Like he's oh, he's six and zero going into this Tyson Fury fight. You know, he's taken down this guy who shouldn't have beaten and this Tom, guy who Tommy shouldn't. Fury. Tommy Fury. Sorry. Tommy Fury. Yeah. Who is Tyson Fury? Is that his Tyson brother? Tyson Fury is Tommy Fury's uh, cousin. Cousin. Got it. Uncle. Okay. Cousin or uncle. One of the two. Well, okay, cool. Um, he's he, also the heavyweight champion. Got it. I was going <laughs> to say, I believe he's the heavyweight champ in the world. Yeah. Fair enough. Um, but, go ahead. Regardless, yeah, they're like, oh, yeah, he's undefeated into yeah, all of that. I mean,. With boxing and any com- any combat sports, it, there's always been this element of the circus, right? Right. The, it's since time immemorial that that boxing and combat sports and blood sports in general, like you, there is the circus, there is the showmanship element of it, there is the thing, and that you know a lot of boxers got steady employment by traveling with fairs, and like you would go out and it would be pay ten bucks and try and see if you can knock out the boxer. And then you would just have all these fights and that kind of stuff. Or you would have, you know, the freak shows of a seven foot guy fighting a six foot, 250 pound guy. You know, it was always been this. And Jake Paul and Logan Paul are the next in a long line of that. Are they legitimate boxers? Are they ever going to fight for a world title? Absolutely not. No. Never even going to come close. Nope. Are they going to get their ass beat by every single boxer that's a legitimate boxer that has pro experience? Probably if they're in the same weight class, mm-hmm. um, have they generated more interest around boxing? Quote big biggest of parentheses quotes here. Sure, yeah. Is that in any way sustainable? Is that anything more than a blip on the radar? Probably not. Which you're seeing in Jake Paul having to. The one time he boxed a boxer, lost, and then immediately had to go back to boxing MMA fighters. Right. So, yeah, there's an argument there that that they've that boxing is bigger now than it was three or four years ago. But there's ebbs and flows to everything as well, too. And yeah, of course, there is. Yeah. There is a, like Jake Paul actually has a pro boxing license, as I understand it. Mm. Pretty much any of those other YouTube boxers that you'll see, there's a reason those are all on. Native American Indian reservations <laughs> <laughs> or, right. or Florida right. where there are you can be an amateur and wear had no headgear and take punches and that kind of thing. So it, it, it take a lot of that with a grain of salt, I'd yeah. say. Anyways, we're just fucking. So you're you're not you're now. not convinced he's the third greatest boxer of all time. <laughs> I, I feel as the as the humble brag <laughs> master's degree and the humble brag combat sports fan on the podcast, I have to I have to go out and go to bat for my 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 leagues here, my sports teams. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. All right. Well, that's uh, pretty much all I got to. Sorry, I said I was going to get through this quickly, and I did not. But I wanted to talk about them. I was very excited too. Uh, Tyler. Um. Yeah, I got around to uh, a couple of things. Obviously, the the week of the wedding, I was very busy, so not a ton. Just kind of like our regular shows. Um, we're very close to finishing up Will and Grace, and then I get to make her watch something, which will more than likely be The Office. Um, and then, uh, so yeah, we got to some Will and Grace the week of the wedding. Uh, the week of the honeymoon, I was not here, and they cool, like, it's one of the cool things about going to like a a place like Antigua, there is no 
TVs in the rooms. They don't have them. So why couldn't watch TV? And the only way you really get to do anything on your phone, if you don't pay for like a data package, um, is to be on Wi-Fi. And yep. the Wi-Fi wasn't that great. So um, I wasn't really on my phone a ton, which was part of the experience. And I was really appreciative of it. Uh, sure. So when I got home, um, I was uh, pretty sick and uh, didn't want to look at a screen. Um, but I did end up getting around to some things. Uh, Sunday, I forced myself to still kind of, well, I didn't have to force myself to wake up. I had to force myself not to go back to sleep a little bit to watch a little bit of the Formula One race in the morning. <coughs> Excuse me. On Sunday. And uh, I was very, very in and out of that race on Sunday. Um, from what I remember, it was a really good race and one of the better races of the season um, that we've had so far from a competitive standpoint. But, um, yeah, I love Formula One, so can't wait for more of that. Uh, and then uh, these past couple of days, I've at least been feeling a little bit better enough to kind of sit in bed and, you know, watch TV while I'm just kind of laying in bed. And so um, I actually got around to the uh, the One Piece uh, series on Netflix, the the live action stuff, um, How is which, it? Nathaniel, I don't know if you've looked at that at all or if Oz i has. am six out of eight episodes in i think we've been watching okay. it what do you think? um yeah i mean wow there's a whole nother discussion in there as well too i think it does a pretty good <laughs> job as overall with one piece but like man there's a thousand episodes or chapters of that shit like no way in hell this <laughs> netflix show is gonna come with even a third of the way through yeah, like the this one is, piece this is for series. the people that are still trying to somewhat touch the anime realm without touching anime and not having to watch yeah, a thousand episodes or something and, and i mean it, they do an okay job from what i've heard like this has done a pretty good job of like breaking out of just the anime sphere on netflix and like i think yeah. it is like people are watching it and stuff and like uh, the cast is really good so far the dude they got to play luffy i think is great i thought you know the the changes i would agree that they've made to kind of condense things and work together have for the most part worked but it's also like a world that is just insane and that's really yeah. <laughs> hard to make work live action so yeah if you've if you've watched one piece in any sense of the way um you'll probably be okay with this but you will not get the appreciation of the character building the world building the universe mm -hmm. um that is one piece whereas if you're a new watcher to just weird pirates and creatures doing things then yeah you're probably like yeah this is pretty cool so i'm glad it's there i'm glad that you know it's it's getting the feedback that it's getting um i do thoroughly enjoy the cast um uh it's cool how they portray some of the powers from the um the gum gum fruits and everything like that uh or the devil fruits and um so yeah it's it's cool i, I like seeing the fish men and stuff like that so i think the the costume design is great character yeah. design is great makeup's really good so yeah i'm 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 fairly pleased i'm in blake what do you get around to uh not not a handful. I've been super busy with work and kind of getting some things in order that way. Um, like I said, went away to a football game, so that was cool. Obviously, had the wedding for the newlyweds with Ty Tyler and Carolia. Um, so that took up some time. Uh, I did get a chance to see Talk to Me, though. So that's actually something. It was me, Adam, Nathaniel, Foley. I want to say this is all at your wedding. Uh, I think we kind of talked about it briefly, but I think... I think me and Foley were the only people who've seen it, to my understanding. Yes. Um, so yeah, we did we didn't kind of drop a lot of spoilers, but yeah. So got to that. I want to say it was like two days before your wedding. Um, talk to me is awesome. I would say it's it's as advertised. Uh I, I do wish I did go into that in a, in a blank slate, like Adam's kind of saying earlier. Uh where unfortunately I did get I get I did get to that on about the second or third wave to the point where there was already kind of things going on on the internet and it was circling that 
um, this is like the best horror movie of all time. This is the best horror movie since Hereditary, right? So I kind of heard all that. So that does kind of skew your expectations a little bit. Um, but as far as kind of going there and just getting a a grounded hour 30 dark grimy horror movie, it's, it's one of those, right? So uh, it's it's not a two and a half hour long drama on families and depression and grief, right? Uh, it does have some of those themes in there which is very A24-ish elevated horror, quote sure. unquote. Um, but then it, it does have it does have some buckets from that 90 minute horror of just like, hey, we just need to we need to scare people. Um, I would say if, if you're a huge horror fan, it may not be the most scary, quote unquote. But there's there's a few scenes in there that'll that'll definitely get you. Um, not a lot of jump scares either, which I would say has a lot going for it because it fits in that 90 minute segment. Um, so it, it kind of fits this bucket of like a stereotypical 90 minute horror film, but it has all of the other elements of something that you would consider like a, a, a elevated uh, horror ideology. So um, really good. I'd recommend it to most people. Um, 90 minutes straight to the point. Um, and well, it's got a pretty diverse cast. Uh, the the main lead in there is a black woman. Um, and then I want to say everybody else, I think it's an Australian film. So you got somebody in there who looks like they may be like a Pacific Islander and things of that nature. So just kind of more so as well as that diversity in the cast. Um, but yeah, awesome movie. Definitely my favorite horror movie of the year. I'd put it over Evil Dead Rise. And I don't know what else have we seen. The last voyage of the Demeter. I miss anything else? Uh, I don't remember off the top. Uh, we watched Nightcrawler. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> eh, fair, fair. We watched Nightcrawler. Um, but yeah, so um, definitely, definitely solid. Uh, I also did rewatch the original Child's Play. Oh, okay. Day, and that was just kind of like bored, nighttime, nice. nothing on. Um, put that one on, and um, that convinced me that my goal this year is to buy a Chucky doll sometime for Halloween, so, um, or a good guy doll, I should say. Uh, so saw one in Denver when I went there for the Nuggets Lakers game. Um, it was at the mall there and I asked if they could ship it and they told me they couldn't ship items. So I was like, okay, so you're telling me I have huh. to purchase this good guy doll and like take it to an airport. I was like, man, eh, probably not. So nonetheless, <laughs> <didn't buy it. laughs> so maybe if I can get around to getting one, we'll see. But, um, yeah, those are really the only two things I've gotten to ex machina or excuse me, Nightcrawler, and then ex machina coming up on the docket, which is a film that, um, I saw for the first time. I want to it might be this calendar year it's definitely within the past year i would say Dang, okay um and it's i think i talked about it briefly on pod under what we're watching and it's definitely on par with my favorite sci-fi movie of all time i'd say that's off one watch so we'll see how i feel again later all righty boys i think that gets it all righty all righty well um with that being said let's uh let's get on on here um, what's first here? Nathaniel, five star review. No five star review this week, but you can give us one on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. Uh, we would appreciate it if you give us a five star review. I'll read it out here on the podcast. You can hear me say what your review is. It can be nice. It can be funny. It can be mean. Just don't be evil. And uh, yeah, Adam. Yeah. Uh, you can find. Uh, you can find us on Twitter. At Banter Row on Instagram at Backer Banter Pod and on YouTube we're just Back Row Banta. Uh, Next week, X sorry, Machina. I, I'm, yeah, no, I'm checking the email. I'm just trying to see. I haven't checked it in a few weeks. Uh, it doesn't look like we have anything in here from. Write us, folks. Anyone? Email us. Yeah, let us know. Um, email us and us uh, email at backerbanterpod.com or uh, backerbanterpod at gmail.com. Um. Yeah, send us your uh, movie suggestions, questions that you have for us, anything like that. Uh, all right, I think that's all the plugs. Yeah, yeah, sounds like it. Blake Holder, where can the people find you at, my man? Yo, yo, uh, Letterbox, the Blake Holder. I'll be on there locking some things. Um, uh, think I put some brief thoughts down. Uh, for Nightcrawler, I'm sure I'll have some thoughts for X Mike and I if I haven't already wrote that. Um, we'll have to double check. Um, yeah, Litterbox, Blake Holder, um, PlayStation, Xbox, Mr. Water Coolers. Uh, Mortal Kombat comes out next Friday. 
ladies and gentlemen, they and them, and whatever you identify as. So, uh, big IP. And funny enough, speaking of that, quick tangent, apologize. Um, they're bringing a lot of 3D um, era characters back, right? That's like the original Mortal Kombat. Um, one, two, three, Deception, Armageddon, things of that nature. Um, and they brought back a character named Natara. Um, who I actually believe she has a small role in the Mortal Kombat film. So you guys probably saw her. But she plays, um, Natara is like a winged vampire. It's kind of like a succubus type of thing. And they actually, um, so they've been announcing the characters one by one up to the release date um, for next week. And they just announced Natara and it's voiced by Megan Fox, which is a direct link from Jennifer's body. Oh, dang. <laughs> so yeah, so it's really cool. And like even Natara's face and everything in the game, her character model is um, designed off Megan Fox. Um, so it looks very similar to like Gen- Jennifer's body. So if anybody who's been or adjacent in that film, um, yeah, Mortal Kombat, take a look at it. I'm sure it'll pop up somewhere on YouTube. That's all I got. Word. We'll go to we'll go to Nathaniel. Uh, you can find me on Letterboxd and uh, Twitter at NS Gingrich. You can find me on Instagram at NathanielG92. Back Row Banter is my, this is this podcast, but the Sandpiper Tapes is my other podcast. And Tyler, where can the people find you? Letterboxd, Instagram, and X. Oh, that's right. all Tyler Rose. <laughs> <laughs> What it? Uh, I still can't. I still like, I've, and uh, we'll potentially look at uh, getting the stream up, maybe at some point, but not like a priority still. But we'll see. <laughs> in my last, um, yeah, is that everybody? I think or I'm last. is Adam last? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at h24 on Letterbox at h. Um, and I don't know if I'll stream anytime soon, so I won't even plug it. Uh, I, I'm waiting to like wake up and then like him turning Twitter into X was like a dream. Yeah. <laughs> I just, we have, I don't know. We've, we've joked about it. How dumb <laughs> is that move to spend $48 billion on a company and then just change the name? It's not smart. And especially when it's like tweets were t- tweeting something. Everybody knew boomers. They know what a tweet is. They don't know how to do it, but they know what it is. And it's like, just it's Isn't built. It's not called a tweet anymore. What's it called? It's now? called an X now. It's called a post. Oh, that's crazy. Bro. No, it's, I thought it's, I guess that's what they, they call tweets thinking, X's. Right? It's an X. I don't know. I think that's what the whole thing was. It's, it's the whole thing's X. It's dumb. It's moronic. Let's get out of here. It's, yeah, sorry. <laughs> it's you know what? That's a good point. <laughs> it's late. I should be ranting about that. This is hour right two. Yeah, <laughs> I'm yeah. Sorry. Uh, fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, you can find, yeah, you you're, you know where to find me. Thank you all for listening, <laughs> especially you made it this far into the episode. Uh, you're my favorite type of listener, and we really do appreciate it. Join us, ne- for, join us next week for our review of Ex Machina. We'll BRB. Be excellent to each other, everyone, and we'll BRB. Thanks for stopping by. I'm married. Woo! Love people. And uh, be well. We'll BRB. Thanks for listening. Thanks for the support as always. Uh, it'd be difficult to continue this podcast without you. Um, and as we say, at least try to do one thing you find enjoyable each day. Um, should give you a little bit better mental health. So we'll be RB. She just doesn't like to talk into microphones. Got it. Got it. I don't like to be so, handed things. Is that like a phobia? Yeah. No, I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Well, tell her say hi. So, he says hi. And that, I uh, hope she, did she get sick? Someone, you asked that question. She did already. not. All she right, did good. not. Thank God. Yeah. Glad you got sick though. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> it's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> it's awful.